Hey again everybody, this week we're going to talk about six more fantastic tools, online resources for educators. If you haven't caught my first two videos on this topic, I'll link to them up in the corner there. This is my third installation to this series, and I want to highlight some amazing finds on the internet. So let's get into it. This first website is a tool where you can remove the background from your image. And there are definitely some situations when you'd like to get that image removed. Let's take for example that I want to create this PowerPoint slide and I want to say welcome to my class and then I'll put a picture in there and so I want a picture of myself and I can put that to the side here but maybe I want to remove all of that background clutter. So I could definitely do that in Photoshop if you have Photoshop but not everybody does. And that's where this website can help you out. You can upload an image, it's all free, and it'll remove the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that image onto the website. And I have to say that it does a pretty fine job of removing that background. This is without me doing anything to even indicate what the background is. It just identified me as a subject person in the picture, and it got rid of all of that stuff behind me. Now there's some simple edits that you can make as well. If you wanted to blur out the background, perhaps, or put a filter, but I say I just want to use it plain like this. So you can download a high definition version. You'd have to log in and sign up for an account. I'm not even signed in and I'm just going to download a regular version of this. So now when I pull my PowerPoint presentation up, I can insert that new picture and it's so simple. Now it's not high resolution because I didn't do, I didn't download the high resolution one, but it's fine. You know, in reality, I probably wouldn't save this as a really big image anyway. I would just use it in canvas. And so it'd be on the smaller side anyway, maybe 600 pixels wide. So from here with my picture that has a transparent background, I can go with save as, and then I would download this as a JPEG, or you can download it as a PNG or a GIF. So again, it just took me like two seconds to remove that background, put it in a PowerPoint slide deck, and then save that as a picture. Very fun. My next favorite website that I want to share with you is WebAIM, and this is a contrast checker. WebAIM has a lot of other tools, but I want to really highlight the contrast checker here. And contrast referring to issues of accessibility. If I have text on my Canvas page, then is there enough contrast between the color of that text and the background so that it's easy for students to read? And that's where I can do this. So let's take, for example, my website, howtocanvas.com. And I want to check to see if that logo and the words have a good enough contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the color. And in Canvas, you can just grab the color of the text and bring that code over here. Each color has its own unique code. And I hit enter, and then I can change the foreground and the background color. And I can see that that contrast ratio is 4.68 to 1, which is good. I want that to be north of 4.5 to 1. And I can see various assessments down here. It passes AA and AAA for large text. It doesn't pass AAA for small text, but I'm not using this color for small text on the screen. It's very bold and it's very big. I can even tinker around if I adjust the lightness and darkness to it. I can see that I can go a touch lighter and it would still pass that contrast ratio. Or I could even darken up the background and I can see how dark can I make the background with this color so that it's an accessible contrast ratio. So again, this is WebAIM. This is from Utah State University. I use this resource all the time. It's so easy to just plug in these values. And we always want to be considering those issues of accessibility in our Canvas courses. The next website is called You're Getting Old, and this is not scholarly or academic. It's purely fun. I think teachers, I'm saying these are resources that teachers should know that exist on the internet, and this is just a fun one. You can use this as an example in your class, or you can just have a little bit of fun with it. And so it's going to tell me how old I am, and I'm pretty old. I'm going to say this is for a friend, and today is Valentine's Day, so I'm going to say that this is the 14th of February. And let's put a, a year, and let's just say 1980 would be the year. And I'm going to say How to Canvas is my name. That's the name of this channel, of course. And I'm going to press go and get all kinds of fun facts about the date that I was born. So it turns out that I am 42 years, 0 months, and 0 days old, which is 15,341 days old. And of course, this is hypothetical, but if today was my birthday and I was born in 1980, then I would be as old as Joey King, the actor, and Romeo Beckham, who is David Beckham's son. And I don't happen to know who either of these people are, but if you add both of them together, then you get my hypothetical birth date. And I can see that I am an Aquarius, my birthstone is Amethyst, and I have put on 903 birthday candles on my cakes throughout all of the years. Uh, my heart has beaten one and a half billion times, apparently. I've taken 
343 million breaths in total. The moon has orbited the Earth 561 times since I was hypothetically born. What's interesting is that my birthday, if I was born February 14th, 1980, that birthday would be closer to the date when Germany annexed Austria than it is today. And all kinds of other fun facts. Um, that year, Pac-Man was developed and released in Japan. We had the Summer Olympics in Moscow. Carl Sagan's Cosmos first broadcast on PBS. And then you can see various milestones of what happened when I was hypothetically a child, a teenager in my 20s and in my 30s, various milestones as well. Looks like recently I would have hit 15,000 days old on March 10th, 2021. Compare that to other people. You know, it's just a lot of fun. So when you stumble across this website, you're probably going to spend a few moments and, and have fun with that. This next resource is a favorite of many people, and this is the nounproject.com. If you ever want to find an icon and you want that perfect icon, you can probably find it on the noun project. And so let's go ahead and search for student, for example. Typically, students are represented by those graduation caps. Some of them have backpacks on them. Some of them are handing in assignments. But there's various students here. And I can look at not only icons, but icon collection, as well as photos. Now the library might not be as extensive as something like unsplash.com, but you're still gonna find a lot of very high quality, high resolution pictures that you can use in your courses. And likewise, if I were to choose desk or school, search for something like that, then I'll find various pictures of desks. And maybe I want to look at icon collections of desks. Here's a collection with tables and desks, and it has a thousand icons. So chances are, I'm probably gonna find something that I like among here. And if you like it, you can modify the color, you can move it around a little bit, and then you can get the icon, you can download it for free. If you don't have a paid account, then you would want to give attribution for the icon. So you would just say the title of the icon, the artist, and then credit the noun project. But it's a great way that you can dress up your Canvas courses. So this fifth resource, I'll admit that I'm not a fan of the name, but the product is pretty awesome. And this is rasterbater.net, where you can create posters. In other words, you can get a picture or an icon or something and you can upload it to this website and it'll blow it up and then you can print it on multiple sheets of paper and then put it together so you can get a large poster. And it's easier to show you than to talk about it. So I'm gonna upload this picture and now we can see what we're looking at is how this would look like if, if it's printed over several pages of paper. And this is standard paper, so eight and a half by 11. And these are portrait and it's four sheets wide. So I have four sheets wide and it's three sheets tall. Although I can see at the bottom, it only uses a sliver of that third row, but it still needs to print it out onto that row. And those are portrait. I could also choose landscape. So if I wanted it for landscape, it's gonna be a lot bigger, a lot larger of a poster. You can see the shadow of this person. This is a person who's 180 centimeters tall and it goes from about the forehead down to the belt to the, to the waistline and it takes four wide, and then it looks like it's about five tall, like four and a half tall, but it would have to print on 20 pages. As opposed to if I were to go back to portrait, you can see the size of this goes to from about the forehead to like the bottom part of the ribs, and it only uses 12 pieces of paper instead of 20. And you can change the paper size, you can change the size of the poster that it prints out. If you're okay with that, then you'll click continue, and then you can style it. Do you want to have some interesting styles like a mosaic style or modernism with a cubistic touch? I'm gonna to go ahead and put this as no effects, although there's lots of effects that you can choose from. And click continue. If you do have effects, then you can add colors to those effects. And since I don't have any effects, I'm gonna continue. More options for the output. Do I want to just make it a poster? Do I just want to enlarge it? Or do I wanna put mosaic or half tones, interlaced half tones. Is there something that I want to do? Do I want crop marks or not? If I'm good, then I can complete the 12 page poster and then I can go on to the output. You're welcome to contribute money if you want. But essentially, if I open up the PDF, then I can see what my image looks like broken down into several pages. So I just go ahead and print this out. I'm gonna have to do some trimming and you can see the crop lines and you can see where I'm gonna trim that last row. And then from there, I would just tape everything together and I'll have a large picture of me on the background. Again, it's a very fun website. This last one that I want to share with you is called Pixlr.com, and we're talking a lot about imagery and multimedia in this session, and what if you don't have Photoshop, but you want to do some edits to your picture? You can actually upload your picture to this free website. I'm gonna start a photo editing project. 
and then I'll go ahead and drag that picture and I'm gonna choose a web picture. Maybe I'll choose that this is uh, 600 pixels wide. So it'll be a little bit on the smaller side, but that'll make it easier to modify as well. So now that I have my picture here on the canvas, I have a lot of options, a lot of things that I can do to this picture. For example, if I wanted to crop it and change the width and the height a little bit, then I can do that. Maybe I want to work to blur out the background a little bit. I can change my brush, find something that's a little bit bigger, change the softness maybe, and then I can work to brush out that background, make it kind of blurry, get that bokeh effect back there. Yeah, very manual, but it looks okay, I guess. There's also a pen tool if you want to sketch on there and mark it up. Now I have white for my pen, but if I press control on the keyboard, then I can select a different color as well. And then you can just start marking and it has some interesting effects. One thing that I think is fun is if you choose the crayon, then you can mark with crayon on your picture. Since I'm recording this on Valentine's Day, I'll go ahead and put a little heart decoration. Or if I back up, maybe the heart decoration should be in red. So I'll go ahead and do something like that. And lastly, suppose I want to put some text on there, I can put a text layer. I'll go ahead and change that, and then move that down there. And now I have a Valentine for all of you. Do remember a contrast, so go back to that WebAIM website that we visited at the beginning of this video and make sure that your contrast is good, because I suspect that there might be some issues here. When you're all good with your image, then you can export that, and then maybe I could put it right into Canvas or right into my PowerPoint presentation. And there you go, simple picture editing right on the internet. So those are my favorite websites. And again, my very favorite website, howtocanvas.com, where you're gonna find all kinds of tips and tricks about advanced Canvas skills or getting started tutorials. You'll find it all here. I would love to hear your favorite websites as well. So go ahead and put those down below in the comments. And until next time. Happy Digging and Morning.